Welcome to the Picture This Photography Podcast, where we cover all things photography. You can listen to us on your favorite podcasting app or just join us every Wednesday here on YouTube. Today, we're covering a canon conspiracy, something I cooked up. I think Canon might be banking all of their tech to come out with the most incredible full frame mirrorless camera this world has yet to see. But then, I did some research and I changed my own mind, but it was too late. I had already convinced Tony. <laughs> did not see that coming. That's a real twist. Yeah, I believe it. So now I'm the conspiracy theorist, and so somehow you're going to be the rational one. I, I went full circle and I turned myself around. But before we get into this debate, I want to tell you about our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, you can make your next move with Squarespace. They have beautiful award-winning designer templates. Tony and I both use them for our portfolios. They're easy to use. If you can drag and drop, you can make a Squarespace website. And you can start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash Tony. And if you use the offer code portfolio, you get 10% off your first purchase. Thanks, Squarespace. Thanks. All right. I don't know how... I made you believe my conspiracy and then I talked myself out of it, but I think we both have some pretty compelling arguments. So much so that I keep like flip-flopping on what's gonna happen. So everyone here watching probably knows uh, people are really speculating what's going on with Canon, right? Yes, because for many years they've been falling further and further behind. And this is so contrary to Canon's long history since before World War II. They were the innovator. And time after time, they were outpacing every other camera company, releasing newer tech, better tech. And that is what made them number one. But then in the last three, four, five years or so, they have become the last innovator. They're behind Nikon. They're behind Sony. They're behind Fuji. And your theory, which you convinced me of, is that Canon is still the tech leader. They're just holding back on that tech. They're developing a new mirrorless platform because we're at this tipping point between DSLR technology and mirrorless technology. And in order to switch over to mirrorless properly, Canon's going to have to release a new full frame camera mount with new lenses. And this is such an expensive proposition that if you were a smart CEO, you would find a way to really wow people with the new system. And one way to do that would be to build up a pent up demand by holding back tech and then releasing it all at once with a new platform so that it seemed like a great value to do this very expensive proposition for individual photographers to buy into a new system and potentially replace a lot of their lenses. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And their CEO is bright. He's been with Canon for a very long time, not always as CEO, but various positions throughout the company. And he's made a lot of great things happen. So I had convinced myself of that theory, except I started looking at Canon's financial reports and mm -hmm. the reports to their shareholders. Canon's got a lot of other plans. And it kind of made me realize that I had been a bit self centered and maybe even selfish in my predictions because I'm a photographer. I like Canon a lot. They were my first digital camera. I have so many fond memories with that camera. Uh, and I'd like to see them come out with something great. Any competition in the market between brands works out for me. But as I was reading more and more, I realized Canon is so much more than just a, a camera company. They make medical equipment. And they're always looking to new technology and above everything else, they have to be a profitable company or else their shareholders won't feel secure. And if their shareholders don't feel secure, they're a failing company. So their number one goal is to make money. Mm -hmm. My question to myself was, if I was a CEO right now, would cameras be the right direction, the right thing to invest in to make more money to make my shareholders feel secure? And that's when I started digging and that's when I started questioning myself. Look at this chart, Tony. Look at okay. it. Okay, I'm looking at a chart now. It uh, starts close to zero and it goes way up to 120 million camera sales in like 2012 09. it like peaked. And yeah. then the other side of this chart, it just plummets down to where it is now at like 35 million camera sales, going from like 120 million to 35 million. So it's a really steep drop. Yeah. 
So I started digging in. Uh, Camera and Imaging Products Association, SEPA, they have all of these numbers like the total camera shipments. And when I started looking, I saw that in 2017, it was like, well, this says 24, like almost 25,000, but that must be in like millions or something. Uh, and numbers weren't that low since 1989. Yeah, so we've plummeted back to where we were in 1989. We've lost all that ground. So I think that there was this huge spike. You can see 2010, 2011, a huge spike. 2012, things start trending downward. And now we see them continue to trend downward. And you can see here, uh, there was the analog sales for a long time. Digital took over. DSLRs took up a huge part of the market. And then mirrorless starts to take up a big chunk of the market. But mirrorless is growing in a market that is shrinking. And so that makes me wonder if that would be something you'd be investing really heavily in. I looked into Canon's annual report in 2016, this like burgundy color here, that's their imaging division. They took up 32.2% of the market, of their um, sales. And then by 2017, it was 27.8%. Now in these reports- So what you're saying is the portion of Canon's revenue, top line revenue that's coming from imaging is shrinking. Right. It used to be a bigger part of the business. Now, 27.8% is still a huge chunk of a company. I don't think they're giving up. That's not what I'm arguing. I don't think that they're giving up uh, cameras. I don't think that Canon cameras are going away. Uh, but I do think that they're hedging their bets and they're investing in different technology. And I think that cameras are not their number one priority, as I had so naively thought. They even came up with a new section in their charts from 2016 to 17, and that's medical system business unit, which is almost 11%, which is huge. I don't think medical equipment is gonna be going away anytime soon, but it seems like camera sales are shrinking by quite a lot. Okay, can I make a couple of counterpoints Yeah, you can here? interject, interject, please. First, you're right, the portion of top line revenue coming from imaging is shrinking year over year. But the actual profits coming from imaging are still about half of what Canon does. And it's that bottom line that's arguably more important. A lot of Canon's profits come from imaging. Not only that, but the power of the Canon brand is one of the strongest brands in the entire planet. No CEO in their right mind is gonna go to the shareholders and say, we're gonna let the value of one of the most powerful brands ever die off. Like Canon's been building this brand for 60, 70 years. Yeah. It's valuable. It's valuable and, it, and the brand rec recognition is incredibly powerful and I think they're using it across all different markets uh, and different industries to get sales. But the thing is, um, they don't necessarily need to produce cameras that you or I would use. And one thing that I found is that they're really looking into network cameras. That's like security cameras, cameras that are overlooking the floor of, let's say, a factory. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're going into a more industrial space. They said they wanted to be the number one printer manufacturer, but when I looked deeper into that, they meant commercial printing, not necessarily the average consumer like you or me. So it seems like Canon is taking all of their technology. They're not necessarily giving up on the development of imaging technology, but they're moving it into different spaces where they can make more money. And that would be with networking cameras. That would be with high-end uh, consumer cameras. So they're being more strategic about how they're developing their tech. They even said the unit sales of interchangeable lens digital cameras declined. They said slightly, but I didn't see outside confirmation of slightly. I saw that things were pretty flat. But they said that uh, camera sales increased overall due to growth in sales of high value added products. So very high end camera products are selling well. That does not necessarily mean that's a high end DSLR. They're also doing imaging for uh, like x-ray technology and things like that. But from what I found high end SLRs are doing just great. And for the record, I would not argue that Canon is going to make the best point-and-shoot consumer camera. I think they're banking on their tech to release what would be like a new 5D, a new 1D. Like competitors that will match or exceed 
the Sony A9, the Sony A7R III, and the Sony A7 III. We're talking about pro-grade cameras. So do you think tech is going to go? Do you think that their mirrorless camera will be that camera? Yes, I think Canon has been holding back their tech. I think Canon is not a tech company. They are like more like a tool manufacturer. When they release something, it has to be 100%. So if you look back at, say, Sony's technology releases, Sony had, when Sony released the A7R II many years ago, they had full width 4K video, which Canon still does not have in 2018. They still yeah. have not released a camera like that that will do combined pixels and to make 4K video. Um, but that A7R II, it overheated all the time. It was a real pain. Same with the Alpha 6300, same with the Alpha 6500. Those things overheat. Canon would never release a camera that overheated. One of the reasons they overheated was they were doing too much processing in the camera. Canon wouldn't do that. They release cameras. You can pick them up day one and all the features work. You can pick it up at the camera store and go shoot a wedding and it, you know exactly what it's going to do. Canon has the tech, but they're keeping it until it is reliable and refined enough to be able to release it. And now that Sony has released those high-end mirrorless cameras, Canon has no option but to answer that. They have to. Maybe they would have waited a few more years to do top-end mirrorless, but now that those are out and people are shifting to them, they will respond. They are going to release something soon. I have a quote from their CEO. Mm -hmm. This can probably be interpreted multiple ways. They said, what do you believe is imperative for today's corporation? And he said, to read the trends of an era, which I think bodes well for this mirrorless camera. But he also says to stay on top of and not lose against generational innovations. It's important to strengthen the financial structure. I believe that as a manufacturer, it is essential to always maintain a strong financial house, creating conditions where you can invest in new things. I saw him refer in an interview, I saw him refer to mirrorless cameras as a trend, which made me a little bit nervous because I thought if you were going to invest a lot of money in something, you might not want to refer to it as a trend if you thought it had some staying power. So that made me wonder if, are they making this mirror, mirrorless camera to make sure that their current Canon shooters don't jump ship to try a trend? Or are they developing it for a new era of mirrorless cameras where they think they'll have some longevity, where they think they should put a lot of energy and a lot of technology and I'm not sure yet. I think he might be making sure that Canon as a company is very strong and profitable in other ways, medical equipment, networking cameras, and maybe perhaps developing the mirrorless camera as a trend just to keep Canon shooters shooting Canon. And that's very different than being like the cutting edge technology of a mirrorless camera. I don't think he's willing to give up the market share that they have. I think, sure, they invest in other businesses, but that's uh, common. In like Sony has lots of other businesses, too. It's really useful for a company, a public company especially, to be able to post fairly consistent financials. Stockholders don't like financials that go up and down. And if you make a new product every two years, then what happens is you see this big spike in revenue and then it drops off. And stockholders don't like that. They like things to be nice and even. That's part of why we see everybody moving to the subscription model. You know, Adobe, Microsoft, now they want you to pay monthly instead of paying for an upgrade every two years because they don't want their financials to spike up. I think that's what Canon is doing by putting so much effort into things like copiers and medical equipment. They're just trying to like even out the spikes a little bit. I think they'll actually take the money that they make from this and put that into the camera business because they can freely move money back and forth between the different divisions. Okay, before we give our final arguments, why don't you tell people about Squarespace? Because they made this podcast possible. Yes, thank you, Squarespace. Squarespace hosts just about any type of website that you might imagine, especially photography portfolios. Chelsea and I both use it for northropphotography.com and chelseanorthrop.com. And the other day, I decided that my portfolio design was looking a little stale. So I went in and in about 10 minutes, I changed the template and refreshed everything. And now I have this like, cool 3D scrolling effect and it looks great on tablets and smartphones. And I see some photographers, they're using websites that look like they're from the 90s or something. And it makes their photography look bad. It does. It does bring down the value of your photography if your website looks outdated. 
And in definitely in less than an hour, you can go to squarespace.com slash Tony, set up a portfolio that will make your pictures look awesome. And you have a 14 day free trial, no credit card required. If you think it looks great, then you can use the coupon code portfolio and keep it running and get 10% off. Yeah. Uh, and I think you should do that, but you can also do it for your doctor's office or your restaurant or whatever type of website that you need. So start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code portfolio to get 10% off your entire purchase, your first purchase. All right. Can I paraphrase a quote from the Canon CEO? Yes. The current CEO who's been working there since like 1961. He has such a long tradition with these cameras, with all the Canon innovation. And I think he's 81 right now. I know this guy isn't going to put the camera business to bed as his final move before he retires. Oh no, this guy has to love the camera business. But he said a quote recently that uh, the market innovators, those companies developing leading edge tech, pay a penalty for that cost. They pay extra to develop the tech. And if you follow a couple of years behind, guess what? You can develop the same tech much faster. And I think he was specifically talking about Sony when he said that. He was vague, but I think he's saying, yeah, Sony developed all this tech and now we figured out how all of it works. We're making it work reliably. And pretty soon you're going to see a big camera out from Canon and he's going to have done it cheaply and more efficiently than Sony, the market innovator, could have possibly done it. I agree with you. They have a seasoned and passionate CEO that's smart. I don't think he's giving up on the camera division. I do think that there's going to be a full frame mirrorless coming out towards the end of this year. I think they'll want it out for this Christmas season. I don't think it's going to disrupt the whole mirrorless market. Whenever I've had a Canon camera, it does what it's supposed to do. It's reliable, but it's not always the flashiest camera with all the bells and whistles. They do like to put out a product that's finished and not experimental. So I don't think that it's going to be the bright, shiny, everything mirrorless camera that I initially thought. I do think that they're going to have a mirrorless camera and it's going to move Canon shooters curious about mirror, the mirrorless system into that mirrorless system, making sure they don't lose their existing uh, customer base. I also found out that Canon is pursuing the full automation of their camera manufacturing at a new factory. And for me, that means that they're trying to increase the, the profit margin of their cameras. I think they're going to make manufacturing more affordable, uh, go for those cameras that are selling, that are make, giving them more profit, and then increase that profit even more with full automation. So I think that they're moving in a more steady, stable direction. I don't think they're going to be disrupting anything or taking any huge risks with this camera. Well, let me say this. Sony's strategy has always been to underprice their camera bodies and then make it up with more expensive lenses. So Canon has to compete against that, but they need things to be profitable, as you said. So how can Canon produce equally high quality and high feature camera bodies? One way would be to reduce the cost of manufacturing through using automation. So this could be part of their strategy to answer to Sony's pricing techniques. What? I think they're going to match it feature by feature. What do all of you think? Do you think that we're going to have a feature by feature Sony versus Canon mirrorless camera? Do you think that Canon is going to be over reliable? Do you think there's going to be no mirrorless Canon camera at all? Everyone seems to have an opinion about this and we want to know yours down below in the comments. Let us know your thoughts. Let me just make my official prediction. Canon will launch a camera that will match against the A7, A7 R3, A9, that lineup and it will be stable and it will be great and the cost will be maybe a little bit more. Um, I, th I think they're trying to get it out by the end of the year, but they will not release it until it's ready. And if they have a last minute problem with engineering, we won't see it until 2019. But that, even people at Canon don't know, I'm convinced, because they don't know how things are actually gonna refine. And Fuji, Sony, they would release it and then try to make a firmware update that would fix problems. But Canon won't do that. They will wait until it's ready. Okay. Thank you, Squarespace, for making this podcast possible. If you'd like to try your own Squarespace website, go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code portfolio to get 10% off. If you can drag and drop, you can make your own Squarespace site. It's just that easy. Thanks, Squarespace.